Looking into the vast approaches to horror in different mediums, I've always believed that it is a flexible treasure trove of a creative genre. Fears, scares, and psychological torment aren't just told in clear-cut patterns, but can be conveyed, approached, and mended in so many ways, especially in something as deceptive as visual media. So instead of covering something conventionally scary this Halloween season, I figured I'd share my thoughts on a piece of horror media that I always found to be really, really cool. The 1977 Japanese classic by Nobuhiko Obayashi, Haosu. Ara? Haosu is a cinematically mad, irreverently self-aware, and just an innocently entertaining surreal horror comedy. But before we dig into that good stuff, allow me to ease you into it by stating first and foremost that there aren't any subversive surprises in terms of the story. This is a pretty typical cheesy haunting tale. A teenage girl gets distraught over her widowed father finding a gaudy new lover and decides to ditch their family vacation in favor of a trip with her girlfriends to the house of her late auntie. And they have fun, then they realize it's haunted, then things go pretty badly. Predictable and very easy to ridicule, but what makes this film so fun to watch is the playful, near-hypnotizing levels of editing and visual foolery that permeates its runtime. You got your traditional cuts from shot to shot that keep the story naturally going, but also plenty of these quirky wipes and irises, shifting these happy-go-lucky characters from one overly enthusiastic highlight to another. Characters transition in and out of sinister smaller frames with chilling set designs back into bright classroom evenings where they casually discuss the first day of summer as if it's just a walk in the park for them. They're like living, breathing dolls, and like the uncanniness of dolls, they have have a plastic quality to them that unbearably never wears off. They're always facing the camera with a smile, always caught in the most idyllic phase of their existence, never wasting an opportunity to be a cheerful big shot at any given cinematic shot. It'd be easy to say that the actors are so natural that they swim through the scenery, but here they quite literally ride or die through the language of extravagant cinematography. Even when shit starts to hit the fan, when the horror of the plot unveils its true form, and the characters are at their most dire of circumstances, the movie never lets up on its fast, highly edited, and ludicrously superficial mode of production. In fact, it becomes crazier as the horror truly kicks in, with green screen effects, color grades, and wacky animations alarmingly bursting their way into the live action shots than usual. Even when the characters are running for their lives, they can't help but pose around immersion breaking backdrops and goofy floating props. This is definitely a fever dream, but one that's very obviously artificially made. More than any deeper themes or sentiments you could possibly mine from this story, it's the craftsmanship of its horror parts and how enjoyable the production and acting team behind it are having that's front and center, to a point where the overt happiness and sheer comedic timing of it all becomes infectiously comfy whenever I view it, borderline smothering at times. And this direction certainly didn't come out of nowhere. Before producing this film with Toho Pictures, Nobuhiko Obayashi started off as an experimental film student that got commissioned to direct several commercials for the advertising agency Dentsu. Hiring someone messing around with 8-60mm films allowed these ads to have a distinct self-expressive edge, something that at the time was only sanctioned for more sophisticated arts like literature and poetry. Obayashi's avant-garde talent is really evident in these ads, the overbearing glamour, the ghastly dissolves, and just how absolutely positive and happy the figures and celebrities on screen are scripted to be. So it's no wonder how Sue turned out this way. Why the actors seem more like models in training doing their best than actual professionals. Why it feels so childish, so aware of itself, so giddy. Obayashi took inspiration from the dreams of his preteen daughter, catching ideas that were inexplicable from an adult's mind but conceivable to a child and replicable in film. 
And what seems like an incompatibility between approaches, glossy commercial making, versus an imaginative yet insidious horror narrative, turns into a surprisingly effective concoction. And that's because Haosu is a film about coping with illusions, washing human vessels living merrily within illusions and desperately trying to break through them. It's not just how the movie chooses to present itself, it's how this diegetic universe seems to function within, like a way of life that just can't be questioned. Haosu's devious and crafty attitude towards illusions supports the horror element in one very specific way to me. The characters are distressingly one note, but by design. The main character is literally named Gorgeous, a schoolgirl living through rose-colored lenses and an equally rose-plastered room, who basks in idealism and even escapes to it when reality doesn't always go her way. The reveal of her father finding a stunning new lover and seemingly replacing her dead mother has her escaping to her room, cuddling with dated pictures of her mom in bed, and inciting this whole ordeal of revisiting her beloved auntie, testing the waters to see if the memories she treasures is as sublime as her present. But as she discovers, the auntie of her memories is much more complicated and tragic than her picturesque memories give off. She only manifests in this world as a result of her late husband failing to live up to his promise of returning to her after wartime, and thus giving hell to the bubbly generation that has lived on after her, the ones who hardly give a second thought to committing to marriage or even looking after their older family. A character who lives on an attractive singular illusion cracks under the pressure of it and ultimately meets their end because of it and the rest of her friends fall under this same amusing trap. A girl named Mac who's made fun of for frivolous eating and watermelon stealing, only to live on as a floating head by the well and a consumable by all. <laughs> That's not watermelon juice coming out of those pipes, let me tell ya. A girl named Melody who clings on to musical instruments and is expected to play songs when her friends demand it, even in the worst possible moments, and then gets consumed by the piano she refuses to escape from. And I love how much control over the narrative logic the auntie has, deceiving the girls about her disabled status at every turn, and even going out of her way to mock them from the foreground. Haosu has very punchy, near-punishing filmic energy, so it's fitting that the ones who survived the longest are the archetypes that are the least exploitable. A girl named Prof being the wisest and most considerate, a girl named Fantasy, whom, like Gorgeous, gets lost in idealism, but also gets the most exposed and justifiably traumatized by the auntie's ghostly antics. And a girl named Kung Fu, who just kicks ass over any kind of possessed moment that comes her way actively flipping the table of the film's illusions into a sick action sequence. Characters play their titular roles so straight that you're just waiting for the moments that they'll break out of their shell and try to take things seriously. But even the act of taking things seriously is told under this hilarious, highly exaggerated theatrical style that you can't help but marvel at the spectacular tragedy of it all. This isn't a subversive horror comedy as much as it is a wildly proud surrealist comedy. The style isn't just lost when the horror is real. Both the lovey-dovey day moments and the most gruesome moments are all part of the same amusement park ride. Wild, numbing, and cozy in varying ways. If there is one complaint I can give because of that, it's that the moments where Haosu does play it straight like a conventional, melancholy horror movie feel pretty out of place. And I'm not saying that slower, more methodical moments are bad. In fact, some of these shots, even when they're not assaulting all of your senses, look beautiful in their own right. But it's when they're within the wacky horror house and the pace abruptly slows down to contemplate the nature of itself that it kind of loses me. Keep in mind, the entire movie isn't like this, and the ending moments certainly pay off, but there are some parts where you'd wish the film would remember that playing it straight or delaying the joke just isn't its strong suit. But it's the style that's very potent in this film. This is a very filmy film. It always gives me a good time whenever I watch this movie, and whenever I show it off to friends. As much as this is about fatally flawed girls getting screwed over by spirits, there is something endearing about seeing these beautifully crafted archetypes live so merrily at the start, and something funny but equal parts tragic about them meeting their doom by keeping at it. 
Like the flexibility of the genre, you can stick to your guns when it comes to getting over scary or daunting concepts. The most methodical way to deal with fears, I've always felt, is a different way of looking at things. Haosu in this case gave me a passionate display and several retroactive laughs into a doomed dollhouse of a world, and having a film that's laughing and pulling off antics with your viewership in mind makes it all the more entertaining for me. It's a film that literally announces itself as a movie from the start, one that's made to be exhibited at face value for its odd sense of comfort and spectacle. And even though you're watching a film about laughably expendable archetypes, the credits showing the actors out in the open, seemingly extracted from the surreal world of Haosu, makes it clear that this was all a cute diversion, an act of entertainment and less of immersion, a wonderful momentary collage of a horror film.